Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will update our DB context class by adding a constructor. We will create a connection string and then utilize this connection string with dependency injection in the program file. Additionally, I will demonstrate various methods of configuring and implementing the connection string. In the next lesson, we will start migration and the database setup in Entity Framework. For that, we need the constructor to enable Entity Framework to create an instance of the HiKaiTalkDB context when it's needed. Without this constructor, dependency injection will not work as expected. So, let's create one. I will briefly explain this constructor usage. The constructor for HiKaiTalkDB context accepts an instance of DB context options as a parameter. DB context options contains configuration options for our database context such as the database provider and connection string, which we are going to create in a bit. The line base DB context options calls the base constructor of DB context class, passing in DB context options. This initializes the DB context using the provided options. In simpler terms, this constructor creates an instance of our HiKaiTalk DB context class with the database configuration options needed for entity framework to work when a dependency injection call is made. And this part is quite common. I would say it's standard. So it would be beneficial for you to memorize it for better understanding. The next step is to create the configuration string. To do this, we need to open the app setting JSON file, which we have discussed multiple times in previous lessons. In this file, I will add an additional section named connection strings, which is a common name for such configurations. Then I will add a key named HiKaiTalk database. And for its value, we will require a connection string. To obtain the connection string, we need to go to the source. On the official Microsoft Entity Framework website, you will find a sample of the configuration string. Let's copy it and use it in our code. You can find the link to this page below the video. This string requires a few changes. First, we need to provide the correct database name, which we can obtain from SQL Server Management Studio as we installed it a few lessons ago. After opening SQL Server Management Studio, we will encounter the connection prompt. We should copy the server name string and then click Connect to verify that it works. As you can see, the database is currently empty. We haven't created the HiKaiTalk database yet. For now, we can close SSMS. I will paste the server name string we just copied into the server value. The next modification we need to make is to name the database, and I'll call it HiKaiTalkDB. Additionally, one more parameter to add to the configuration string for the development stage is Trusted Server Certificate. Now we need to register it in the program file, and we will achieve that through dependency injection. Let's proceed with this step. After these two injections, we will add one more. Once again, we will work with the builder object, and this time we will use the addDBContext method as follows. Using this lambda expression options or predicate, we will configure the database provider and connection string to our DB context and use SQL Server with the connection string. Now we have a few options. The first one is to pass the connection string directly, like this. But it doesn't seem like a good practice. The next option is to configure correctly using the builder configuration. In this case, we need to specify the section name and the key name. The next option is to configure it correctly using the getConnectionString method. We will streamline the code by eliminating any unnecessary code. Now it looks correct and concise. So uh, these options will be nicely passed through dependency injection. When the application starts, the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container will create an instance of the HiKaiTalkDB context class and inject it into any classes that depend on it. So we don't need to manually create an instance of the HiKaiTalkDB context class in our code. So virtually we can split the provided string into two parts. Now this part is dependency injection registration. And this part connection string configuration. In the next lesson, we will complete the migration and database creation. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!